What would silver's price have to be if it went into the same bubble that it was in in 1980 compared to all these other assets? Real estate, the stock market, uh, um, uh, uh, the U.S. Treasury bond, the money supply and currency. Well, they call it money supply, currency supply, and so on. And so what I did was I took the growth of the day in 1980 that silver peaked, and I took the percentage growth rate of all of those other things since that date, and I applied that percentage growth rate to the $52.50, and you come out with a total. <laughs> and the average is over $900. I absolutely believe that triple-digit silver is baked in the cake, that there is no possibility that we can go infinitely out into the future without triple-digit silver happening. It will happen one day. We have not yet exceeded our 1980 high. Is there anything else in society, other than computer chips maybe, which was a brand new technology, other than computer chips, is there anything else in society that is sell still selling at a discount to its 1980 price? I can't find anything except no, silver. silver. I make that point quite often myself. You know, what's interesting is that uh, there was one day, you know, price is 50 plus. But if you look at the average price of silver for the year 1980, it was $20 an ounce. But if you go yeah. back, one year ahead, the all-time high for silver in January of 1979 was $6. So after the big run-up, when it resettled and found what I'll kindly call equilibrium, it was over 300% greater than the all-time high year before. Am I making sense? Because that, that's the truth. Yeah, and right. this is something that very few people know or, or discuss. But so if you took that $20 average for the year 1980 and did the same metrics, would that put us at $1,800 silver? So is 20 is roughly half the price of 50? I don't know. I just know yeah. that $50 is going to become support, uh, but then it's going to blow way past that. And I don't think you're ever going to see it come down to $100 again. It'll probably settle at 150 or 200 or 300 I don't know. It may blow up to like 300 bucks an ounce peak and then come back to... 120 or something like that. Either way, it's a physical asset that you can hold in your hand that has no counterparty risk that is destined for these big numbers. And I don't see that there's any way that this could not happen. Uh, you know, I look for, well, how is it possible that, that uh, they could keep this from happening with this constant growth of the currency supply? And now all of these emergencies that have been happening this century, these all these things that come out of nowhere like a uh, you know a diesel truck broadsiding us in an in intersection, uh, Lehman Brothers and and uh, COVID and you know war in Ukraine and it goes on and on and on and uh, there will be a temporary rise but then it comes back down and I do feel you know there's been there is one uh, chapter on or one section on ma manipulation and I do think that some of the manipulation is real and people have been going to jail for some of it. Sure. Uh, that's mostly the short-term manipulations where they're just stealing from the counterparty in the trade. Yeah. Uh, but the long-term manipulations, uh, the comptroller of the currency just made JP Morgan disclose how much their, their uh, short position really is, their position in uh, the futures market. Uh, they were reporting under... Uh, currency swap standards where you only have to report a small percentage. And they said, no, precious metals, you've got to disclose the whole thing. And so that chart just shows this sudden explosion. I'm sure you covered that in, uh, you know, in. Yeah, we've talked about it when the chart first came out. I want to uh, talk about something. The long-term manipulation, though, is coming to an end, is my point. And yeah. uh, once it stops, these big bullion banks are going to get on the long side with every. <laughs> you know, they'll convince the public to go short while they go long. So, you perfect segue for my next question. Uh, so, are you familiar with Scott Meenard by any chance? Scott uh, no, was at da Davos, now better known as the World Economic Forum, in uh, 20.